Hey guys, welcome to Layla Teachers. Today we'll speak about the metabolism of ammonia and also about the urea cycle. First, I'll start with the fate of ammonia. Starting with reductive amination, it is the addition of ammonia to certain compounds. For example, oxaloacetate with alanine will give you aspartate and pyruvate. You can see the addition of the amine group to the oxaloacetate producing aspartate. Second is the uh, ATP requiring formation of glutamine from glutamate and ammonia by glutamine synthetase, which occurs primarily in the muscle and the liver, but it is also important in the CNS, where it is the major mechanism for the removal of ammonia in the brain. The kidneys, they generate ammonia from glutamine by the actions of renal glutaminase and renal dehydrogenase. Ammonia is also obtained from the hydrolysis of glutamine by intestinal glutaminase. Urea is the major disposal form of amino groups derived from amino acids. One nitrogen of the urea molecule is supplied by free ammonia and the other nitrogen by aspartate. The carbon and oxygen of urea are derived from carbon dioxide. Urea is produced by the liver and then is transported in the blood to the kidneys for excretion in the urine. The first two reactions leading to the synthesis of urea occur in the mitochondria whereas the remaining cycle enzymes are located in the cytosol and here I'm speaking about the urea cycle. So first we have the formation of carbamoyl phosphate by carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1. It's an important enzyme. Carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1. It is driven by cleavage of two molecules of ATP. The carbamoyl portion of carbamoyl phosphate is transferred to ornithine by ornithine transcarbamoylase. The reaction product is citrulline, which is transported to the cytosol. So those were the first two reactions in the mitochondria. Ornithine is generated with each turn of the urea cycle, much in the same way that oxaloacetate is regenerated by the reactions of the citric acid cycle. If you remember the citric acid cycle, you'll know that oxaloacetate is regenerated with each turn of the cycle. Arginine succinate synthetase combines citrulline with aspartate to form arginine succinate. The alpha amino group of aspartate provides the second nitrogen that is ultimately incorporated into urea. So we said the first carbon is from free ammonia and the second one is from the aspartate. Arginine succinate is cleaved by arginine succinate lyase to yield arginate, arginine and fumarate. The arginine formed by this reaction serves as the immediate precursor of urea. Fumarate produced in the urea cycle is hydrated to malate, providing a link with several metabolic pathways, for example malate going into the citric acid cycle. Alternatively, the oxaloacetate uh, can be converted to aspartate via transamination and can enter the urea cycle as well. Arginase cleaves arginine to ornithine and urea and occurs almost exclusively in the liver. The other organs lack this enzyme. So that is the urea cycle for you. Now speaking about the fate of urea, a portion of the urea diffuses from the blood into the intestine and is cleaved to carbon dioxide and ammonia by bacterial urease. This ammonia is partly lost in the feces and is partly reabsorbed into the blood. So urea, it diffuses from the liver and is transported in the blood to the kidneys where it is filtered and excreted in the urine. In patients with kidney failure, the plasma urea levels are elevated, promoting a greater transfer of urea from the blood into the gut. The intestinal action of urease on this urea becomes a clinically important source of ammonia, contributing to the hyperammonemia often seen in these patients. Speaking about the regulation, uh, carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1, our first enzyme in the mitochondria, it requires N-acetylglutamate for allosteric activation.
It is synthesized from acetyl coenzyme A and glutamate by N acetyl glutamate synthase. Therefore, the intrahepatic concentration increases after ingestion of a protein rich meal, which provides both a substrate, which is glutamate, and the regulator of N acetyl glutamate synthesis. This leads to an increased rate of urea synthesis after a protein rich meal. The stoichiometry of the reaction of the cycle is aspartate plus ammonia plus carbon dioxide and three ATP molecules plus water. Our products are urea, fumarate, two ADP molecules from the ATP, one AMP, two inorganic phosphates. Here's a review. So first we have uh, carbamyl phosphate by carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1. Then we have ornithine by ornithine transcarbamylase. Then we have citrulline. Okay. Then we have arginine-succinate from arginine-succinate synthetase. Then we have arginine and fumarate from arginine-succinate lyase. And only in the liver we have the enzyme arginase, which cleaves arginine to ornithine and urea. And that is it for this video. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.